Today we're looking at solving inequalities. And so I have one started here. It's an example. Um, solve each inequality. We're going to do two different examples and hopefully from there you'll be fine. Uh, again, it's good to have colors on hand. Um, we're going to uh, segment each part of a graph in order to determine what's going on with these inequalities. But you can see in this statement, uh, the inequality is the greater than sign. Okay, so different than solving equations. Equations has an equal sign. Inequalities has a greater than sign or a less than sign or greater than and equal to or less than and equal to. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this problem. All right, we've been uh, graphing for a long time and we've kind of become master graphers. And so I'm going to actually answer these questions a little differently than they do in the textbook. If you take a look at the examples out of there. Um, I, I think uh, we've become adept at graphing. We've been doing a very good job of that, so I think we should continue. Uh, so what I would do right off the bat is I treat this as an equation. Okay, so you have x plus 3 as one factor, 2x minus 3 as another factor, and we set it equal to 0. By setting it equal to 0, what we're doing is we're finding the roots or the x-intercepts of the graph. So using that zero principle that we talked about before, we set each factor equal to zero. And solving each of these little equations, you get x equals negative 3 and x equals 3 over 2. What that does is it provides the x-intercepts. And since we know um, that this is a quadratic because we have x times 2x, right? We have an x times a 2x, which gives us 2x squared. It's a parabola. We know the leading coefficient is positive. It's degree 2. Um, the roots are order 1, obviously, because it's a parabola. Then we can graph this very simply. The end behavior is quadrant 2 to quadrant 1 because it's a parabola that opens up. We have an x-intercept at negative 3, and we have an x-intercept at 1.5. At this point, I don't, when I'm sketching the graph, I don't care about the where the y-intercept is. I just want to draw a rough sketch of what the graph would look like. The only accuracy that I want is where it opens or how, how it reacts in terms of the m behavior and the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are critical. As you can see, I changed colors here, now I'm dealing with red. I'm highlighting that greater than sign in the uh, equation at the beginning. So it's basically saying, where is this function, this function, where is this function greater than zero? Well, this is the line zero, right? That's the zero line. So where is this function greater than zero? Well, it's greater than zero. I'll change to blue now and highlight the areas where this graph is in fact greater than zero. Okay? Below the x-axis, the graph is negative. Above the x-axis, the graph is positive. So the solution to this question is this function is greater than zero for all values of x less than negative three and for all values of x greater than 3 halves. Now, we don't use an equal sign in our inequality because the equal sign says, where is it on the x-axis, right? And the question doesn't have an equal sign in it, so therefore we're done. That's it. Very simple. Um, I just uh, drew a line on there, uh, so I'm going to erase that line. I'm trying to move uh, the graph over here. Let me try that again. There we go with success. All right, next example. In this example, we have a cubic polynomial. That's a 12x. And here are cubic polynomials less than or equal to zero. OK, 
Okay, so this is um, the cubic polynomial is less than or equal to zero. So when we graph it, we're looking for the all the areas where the graph is below the x-axis and, in fact, on the x-axis because of that equal sign. So what we're going to have to do then is we will have to substitute in numbers. We use the factor theorem and substitute in numbers to see where this function equals zero. So in the polynomial, I'm going to substitute in negative one because I know it works. Okay, but you would have started with one, probably saw that it didn't work. When you sub in negative one, it equals zero. I've already done that ahead of time to save some time. Therefore, I know that x plus one is a factor. So I can use uh, long division or synthetic division uh, to find my other factors. So I put the root out front, then I put the coefficients of the polynomial on the top line, Okay, I always carry the first number. So I carry the negative two, and I always multiply by the root. I'm multiplying by negative one in this case, because that's the root. Negative two times negative one is positive two. And then I add. So add vertically, negative six plus two is negative four. Multiply again by negative 1, so I get 4, and add, I get 16. Multiply by negative 1 again, I get negative 16, and add, and I get 0 remainder, which we've talked about having 0 remainder is a must. I've taken a cubic polynomial and I divide it by x plus 1, so therefore this other factor down here is quadratic. Now I know um, that this is a, we've talked about, sorry about that line again, sometimes that happens. Um, we talked about how this uh, quadratic is non-monic because it has that negative two out in front. But the very first thing I've asked you to do is look for a common factor. In this quadratic, we do have a common factor of negative two. So when we divide everything by negative two, we get this quadratic, which also factors by using the man method, right? Two numbers that multiply give me negative eight and add to give me two, are four and negative two. So x plus four, x minus two. Okay, at this point, maybe you've already fast forwarded it a little bit through this because this is uh, common knowledge. Okay, so slide this over a little bit. I don't know why it's just sliding over there, but again, I don't care. All right, so look at the top of the screen. I have that cubic polynomial less than or equal to zero. My cubic polynomial is now factored. I have a negative two as a factor. I have an x plus one as a factor. I have an x plus four as a factor. I have an x minus two as a factor. All the factors that I've seen um, I'll circle them here just so you can see them. I have an x plus 1 factor, I have a negative 2 factor, I have an x plus 4 factor, and I have an x minus 2 factor. And the polynomial now has changed into all the factors, and now we're talking about less than 0. So I could make it equal to 0 and, and show the roots, but I, I think the roots or the x-intercepts are pretty clear what they are right now. So I'm going to just jump right to the graph. First of all, I'm at negative 1 as one of my x-intercepts. I have also negative 4 as one of my x-intercepts, and I have positive 2. Notice how I'm not writing the numbers on the x-axis. What I've done is I've created a grid. So that's, that's good enough to show where the numbers are falling. If I didn't create a grid on there, then I'd have to label it with numbers. So either way. This is a uh, cubic leading coefficient is negative because of that negative two out in front. 
all of my x's are positive and they multiply to be x cubed, but then you're multiplying by that leading coefficient of negative 2. The end behavior then, we know the end behavior of a cubic typically extends up straight like a line uh, from left to right, so this one's going to extend down from left to right, much like a line with a negative slope. So it's going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. So I'm going to start up in quadrant two. All of my uh, factors have order one, so all of my roots are order one. So I'm just coming down through again. I don't care where the y-intercept is. What I'm more concerned with is above and below the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to highlight my inequality again for you. We're talking about less than, and we're talking about equal to, zero, right? So we're talking about the x-axis and below. So where does this graph land on the x-axis? Well, it lands on the x-axis at these three x-intercepts. Where does it fall below the x-axis? Where is it negative? Right in here and right down here. Sorry about the scribble. Everything in blue. So what is the solution? Well, the arm on the right is easy it's x is greater than 2 okay um, this other one it's in between two x intercepts and therefore we can write it as a compound inequality we've talked about those before x is between uh, negative 4 and negative 1 so this says x is greater than negative 4 x is less than negative 1 now because of the equal sign in the beginning of the inequality all of these inequalities have equal signs in them all the way, all three of these, okay? Um, the other thing I should have discussed in the first example is we could use bracket notation for these intervals, right? Um, so this one on the left here, I could use square brackets and just say it's between negative 4 and negative 1. Remember, the square brackets tell me that it is equal to. And this one over here... It's equal to 2, so I'm using a square bracket. And where does it end? Well, it ends at positive infinity. Infinity doesn't have an end, so you always use a round bracket to show infinity. So you could use bracket notation or the inequality notation. I think at this point, you should be fairly well off um, and able to do the questions that I have ready for you. I just had to find them in my uh, my phone here. We are looking at page 138, doing numbers 1 to 4, 5 A D E, 6 B C, 7 A C, and 8. I specifically chose those letters for a reason. So. Make sure you're practicing them all. Use the weekend to get caught up on everything that you haven't got caught up on. Our test is on Wednesday. Good luck. We'll see you on Monday.